Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody bless Jesus tonight. Somebody praise Jesus tonight. Somebody honor Jesus tonight. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him. The praise is high tonight. Glory, glory, glory. I said the praise is high tonight. Mm. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. We praise God. We bless him. We glorify him. We honor him. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised tonight. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same sun. Hallelujah. God is worthy to be praised. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. There's no God like our God. Hallelujah. We can search all over and we'll find nobody like Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you on our prayer line, you already know. Keep that praise high before the Lord. Hallelujah. Because God hears your prayer. God hears your praise. Hallelujah. He hears your worship tonight. Oh, we bless Jesus tonight. I'm excited. Hallelujah. I'm overjoyed. Amen. At what God is doing in this atmosphere. Hallelujah. I thank God for this ministry. Amen. This is Prophetic Impact Prayer and Word Ministry. I am Pastor Prophetess Carmen Haywood. Amen. And I just take this time to greet you all. Amen. Some of you greet me as apostle. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you on tonight. Truly, it's an honor, amen, to be before God's people. Truly, it's an honor to serve God's people, amen. I thank God for every member, every covenant partner, amen, of our ministry and those of you that take the time to join every now and then. We welcome you to our ministry prayer line. We're on the call. We welcome you to our ministry Facebook Live, amen, and our ministry um, Instagram Live. God bless you on tonight. Truly, there's a word from God. Amen. I need you all to take the time to share. Amen. Sharing is caring. <laughs> Hallelujah. So once you share, amen, you are blessing the whole world. Amen. When you take the time to share on your timeline, you don't know who's going to click on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You just know you did your part. Amen. In sharing and inviting someone to the, to the ministry broadcast tonight. Once again, those on our prayer line, stay right there. Um, those of you that want to join on Facebook Live, you're more than welcome to. Amen. I am Pastor Prophetess Carmen Haywood. Once again, the overseer, amen, of this beautiful, dynamic, powerful, anointed ministry. Hallelujah. That I take no credit for. Amen. But I give God all the praise, honor, and glory for it. Amen. Many souls have been saved. Many have been healed, delivered, and set free through this ministry. And so I, I would be... <laughs> Um, it wouldn't be right if I did not give God the praise, amen, for what he's doing here in the midst of his people. Glory to God and for each and every one of you. Glory to God. Have you, take the time, have you taken the time to share? For some reason, I can't see any hearts. I can't see the thumbs up on Facebook. Um, I went in my settings and I tried to adjust it and I was unable to adjust the settings. I don't know what's wrong with Facebook, but I can see the comments. I can see the words, but I can't see no hearts. Um, so y'all give me some hearts on Instagram live. Amen. Keep this broadcast going in Jesus name. Um, I am able to view um, after the after the live broadcast and I can see the hearts and the thumbs up. And all of you that, you know, post different emojis and things like that. Glory to God. But I thank God for each and every one of you. Listen, let's dive into the word tonight because I'm ready. Hallelujah. I'm ready. Ah, you did the old shot. Hallelujah. I said I'm ready. Hallelujah. I said I'm ready. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's somebody on tonight. Amen. Who's going to hear the word of the Lord. And this word is going to shift your very life. Hallelujah. This word tonight is going to shift your very life. Glory to God. Amen. Those of you that receive this word tonight, your life is going to shift. Hallelujah. And it's going to get to a place called purpose and destiny. Hallelujah. God always sends his word to his people to edify, to comfort, to exhort. Amen. That is the purpose of prophet, prophetic ministry. Glory to God. Blessings to you all tonight. Those of you that have greeted me, God bless you. I love you all in Jesus name. I believe I saw my spiritual son, Elder Freeman tonight. Stay with us as long as you can, son. There's a word from God. Amen. For you. Hallelujah. The Lord, as I was in prayer, amen, God was speaking to me um, 
um, earlier today about a lot of things. You know, I came on live and I shared with you all, I believe we came from 1 Peter um, chapter 4, verse 12 through 14. Amen. Where God said, thinking not strange, the fiery trials that have come to try you, but they are not to kill you. They're not to assassinate you, but it's to edify you. Glory to God. And God also told us this morning, he said that he would not leave us ignorant of Satan's devices. Hallelujah. So that word was powerful this morning. Amen. Then God began to speak to me in my time of prayer around the noontime after I left the gym, God began to speak to me about the Holy Spirit. And then he began to tell me, you know, he just began to minister to me about his people not having his spirit and his people having faith, but not the Holy Ghost. And so God began to deal with me about that. And I began to pray for the body of Christ and pray for the leaders. God bless you, Sister Lisa, tonight. Amen. I begin to pray for the leaders uh, worldwide in the body of Christ. You know that there would be order. Hallelujah. Amen. Because once there's order with the leaders, amen, then the church, amen, glory to God, will get into order. Hallelujah. And the people will be able to follow. Amen. As we continue to follow Christ. Glory to God. Somebody shout, that's order. That's order. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's what God is doing. But how many of you know many are going to be left behind? Amen. Many are going to be left behind. I'm, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but in, on the day of judgment, many are going to hear, depart from me. You workers of iniquity, I don't know who you are. I, I never knew you. Hallelujah. So God is going to say that to many people. Amen. But you have to be the one that is in place and in position to hear, well done. Glory to God. What you do today and what you do tomorrow and what you do next week and what you do next month is going to determine what you're going to hear from God. Okay, 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 okay. L let me just slow walk this right here because many of us believe that because we're good, because we do good things, because we're a good person, that we're going to make it in the kingdom. Well, the truth of the matter is the devil does some good too. Can, can we just be real? The devil is not always evil. He knows how to do some good to make himself look like. <laughs> Y'all not talking back to me tonight. Hallelujah. The, the, the devil can do some good stuff. Yeah, to try to try to make you believe that God is in the midst of it. Yeah, it's called manipulation. Come on here. Hallelujah. It's called manipulation. And that's one thing that the enemy does very well. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we have to be careful. And so God began to speak to me. What did he say? He began to talk about the Holy Spirit. That was good, right? That was good. He began to talk about the Holy Spirit and faith and how in order for you to walk by faith and not by sight, you need to have his spirit. Then he threw the word discernment in there. And I was like, okay, God, I know what discernment is. Mm -hmm. And so he began to deal with me about the Holy Spirit. He began to deal with me about having faith. And then he also began to deal with me about discernment. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, many of my people, and I'm trying to get this music playing. He said, many of my people do not make the right decisions. Listen to this, Sister Johanna. It's going to bless you real good, right? Many people do not make the right decisions because they don't have the Holy Spirit. And I said, okay, God. He said, they have faith in me. Because faith is 100% trust in God. So we can have faith in God because at one time we had faith in people, right? Come on. You, you know what it's like to put your trust in somebody, right? But now you have learned. Thank you for the heart. So Instagram. Now you have learned to put your trust in God. But because the enemy is working overtime. Come on, somebody. He's working overtime. What's happening is the traps that he has set for you, many of you are falling in them. That's what God showed me. And he said, because there's no discernment. Hallelujah. Then he began to speak to me earlier today. I got to give you all this, and then we're going to dive into the word for tonight because it's going to lead up to it. Amen. Then he began to speak to me about having victory. And how many people don't have victory because they don't go through the, uh, the whole test. They don't go through the whole situation. They don't go through, um, they give up in the middle. You know, people throw in the towel. They don't want to be um, uh, produced. They don't want to be shaped. They don't want to be molded. So people give up because this is a microwave generation. 
right? Come on, even our young people are like that. That's why we got to have patience with our young people and we got to teach them patience because they really don't have patience, right? They want everything quick. You know, they want everything in a hurry, right? Think about the, um, the prodigal son and how the prodigal son, he wanted all his father's riches too early, but his father gave it to him because he said, you know what? I'm going to give it to you. It's all right. I'm going to give you the riches. You think you can handle it? I'm, I'm going to give you what it is that you're asking for. And so the father be, ah, you did your child, began to give the prodigal son all his stuff. And he realized that he wasted it. Come on. Y'all know the Bible, right? He, the prodigal son wasted all of his living. He wasted everything. He was partying. He was having a good time, you know? And then when the time came for him to use the resources that his father gave him, it was too late. Come on, it, it was too late, right? Y'all know the story of the prodigal son. So what is God saying? He says, sometimes you're asking for things too early. Mm. Hallelujah, God bless you, uh, Minister Nicola, tonight. Sometimes you're asking for things too early. So sometimes you're not completely prepared for the blessing. And, and so, yeah, it's like you want God to give you something that you're really not ready for. And so here comes disappointment now. And now you got people that feel like God has disappointed them. I want you to shout in your atmosphere, God never disappoints. Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor Damon, tonight. God bless your Instagram live. How many of you know God never disappoints? I want you to get that in your spirit tonight. A lot of times we expect God to do things that we're really not ready for. Somebody shout prematurely, prematurely. And that's what that means, right? That's what that means. And so God is saying, even like the prodigal son, what happened, he got all of his stuff too early. Hallelujah. That's why God never disappoints. And so we have to understand, people of God. Yes, God bless you, Anita. We have to understand that when God makes us a promise, and when God really, when he prophesies, because that's what we talked about last week, that the promise still stands. The prophecy still stands. What was spoken over your life, it still stands. But what happens with prophecy, I just want to teach real quick right here. What happens with prophecy is when you receive a prophetic word from the Lord, from the prophet, that's when you have to align yourself with God. If you don't align yourself with God, then it's not going to come to pass. You will be waiting year after year. You might even be waiting month after month. Come on. You're going to be waiting on the manifestation of the word that was spoken. So it's not that the prophet lied, but it's just that you wasn't in alignment. Okay, come on. Somebody shout, align me, Lord. And some of you are aligned, but you need God to realign you. Some of you were in position, but now you need God to realign you. It's okay if you get off track. Hallelujah. It's okay. Hallelujah. If, if, if some distractions come into your life and you get to the point to where it's just too much for you and you got to regroup. Hallelujah. God is a God of a second chance. He's a God of a third chance. He's a God of a fourth chance. Hallelujah. As long as there's breath in your body, then what that means is you have time to repent and get it right with God. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Hallelujah. As long as there's breath in your body, higher did your shot. Somebody's going to be blessed tonight. Somebody's going to come out of a pit tonight. Somebody's going to get their healing tonight. Somebody's going to get their deliverance on tonight. Hallelujah. Because you needed to keep on going. Hallelujah. You need what it is that God has for you to keep on going. Hallelujah. CC Simone says, contact me. Can you inbox me, woman of God? In wisdom, you would never, never put your phone number on social media. Amen. CC Simone. Amen. That's some wisdom. So if you could delete that comment, woman of God, never put your, your personal phone number on social media. You get a whole bunch of calls from a whole bunch of people. All right, you become a target, okay? Please inbox me, all right? Woman of God, please inbox me your number, amen, and what your comment was, but delete that if you can, please, all right? Thank you so much, thank you. I'm trying to help you. I'm not your pastor, but I'm trying to help you, amen. So what God gave me that's leading up to now, he said, tell my people their issue is not unto death. He said for me to tell you, your issue is not unto death. He said that's natural and spiritual. I said, my God, my God, this going to bless some of y'all tonight. Because some of you thought it was over because you messed up. Mm -hmm. Some of you were ready to give up because you messed up. Mm -hmm. 
some of you, it's like the enemy was just like taunting you. And he was just, you know, telling you that it's over. And it's going to always be like this. Hallelujah. While I have your mail tonight. Glory, glory. Thank you, CC. I, I have your mail tonight. Hallelujah. I have your mail tonight. Glory to God. I know the devil told you it was over. I know he told you that you were washed up and, you know, nobody's ever going to want you. And, you know, nobody's going to ever look at you. Nobody's going to ever desire you. Well, let me help you out, singles. Hallelujah. That are in the waiting room. Glory to God. God still has your man of God, ladies. God still has your woman of God, men. Hallelujah. Let, let, let me just encourage you tonight. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is exalted. Hallelujah. I said the devil is a liar and God is exalted. Hallelujah. Now you have to shift your thinking. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying to tell many of you start shifting your thinking. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. You're thinking too small. You, you, some of you, you're thinking the way that the enemy wants you to think. But now is the time for you to think the way that God desires for you to think. The Bible says think on these things. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are just. Uh-huh. He says, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, which is anointed. He says, think on these things. He says, these are the things that I need you to think on. Don't think on the lies of the devil and what the enemy is telling you that is contrary to the word of God. Hallelujah. He says, I need you to think on these things. Hallelujah. For we have the mind of Christ. I said, we have the mind of Christ. Be edified tonight. Hallelujah. Be encouraged tonight. Glory to God. We have the mind of Christ. I need you all to share the broadcast, if you will. Invite somebody. Tag somebody's name. Amen. Share with your followers on Instagram Live and share with your followers on Facebook Live. Amen. I come to tell you tonight that it's not unto death. Your issue, your sickness is not unto death. Your situation is not unto death. Hallelujah. That's natural and spiritual. Glory to God. Uh-huh. That's natural and spiritual. Because see, Hezekiah, his sickness was unto death. Hallelujah. But God sent the prophet. Hallelujah. To prophesy over his life and to prophesy over his destiny. And he gave him specific instructions, Minister Nicola. The prophet gave Hezekiah in the midst of his sickness. Mm. In the midst of his issue. Hallelujah. God saw fit to put his word in his prophet. Hallelujah. To give to Hezekiah so that his life would not just be spared, but that more years would be added on to his life. So we're going to turn to 2 Kings chapter 20 on tonight. Y'all know this is a word ministry. Glory to God. Amen. So I want you to get your Bibles, get your notepads, get your ink pens. You might say, I ain't opened my Bible in years. Well, you're the one I want you to go get your Bible. Amen. I want you to go get your sword. Amen. Because that is your weapon. Hallelujah. I want you to go get your Bible. We're going to wait for you. Hallelujah. I said, we're going to wait for you. Glory to God. Go ahead and get your Bible. Amen. If you got to get your tablet, if you got to get another device so that you can type the scripture in, that's what you do. Amen. Glory to God. We've already prayed. Amen. We had two intercessors pray on tonight. Our sister Sequita prayed. Amen. And our sister Hattie. Amen. Prayed on the prayer line. And we thank God for sister Hattie. Amen. She's new to the ministry, but she's ready to work. Amen. Glory to God. So I like saints like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you know a pastor, amen, an apostle, an overseer loves the saints when they avail themselves? Y'all not talking back to me. Glory to God. Because if a pastor got to keep asking you to do something and asking you to do something and asking you to do this, and asking you to do that, then guess what? It's best that you just don't do it. Come on, hallelujah. If you can't do it willfully and, and, and with gratitude, then it's best that you just don't do it. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. But we thank God for help and we thank God for good help. Amen. So we say amen to the prayers that have already been written to the Father's ears. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we got 2 Kings chapter 20, verse 1 through 7. 2 Kings 20. 1 through 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Kings 20, we're going to read 1 through 7. And it's going to bless your life. Amen. You'll never be the same. You'll never be the same. The word of the Lord says, And in those days of Hezekiah, he was sick unto death. Can somebody shout death? Can somebody shout death? He, he was sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, 
set thine house in order, mm, for thou shalt die and not live. Verse 2, then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, mm -hmm. he says, I beseech thee, O Lord. Now, this is Hezekiah. This is Hezekiah. He says, I beseech thee, O Lord. He says, remember how I have walked before thee in truth. And with a perfect heart, that's an upright heart, right? And have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah began to cry sorrowfully. Verse 4, and it came to pass after that, that Isaiah had gone out into the middle court. The prophet went out to the middle court. Listen to this, that the word of the Lord had came to him saying, turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. Mm, 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 mm. Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I have heard thy prayer. Somebody hear God tonight. Somebody hear the spirit of the Lord tonight. God has heard your prayer. Mm. My, my, my. Glory to God. If we was in the sanctuary, we'd be shouting right there. God says he has heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears and behold. Now behold means see. He says, I have seen thy tears. Now see, I will heal thee. And on the third day, thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. Verse six, he says, and I will add unto thee days of 15 years. My Lord, somebody shout, God's going to add to your life. He's going to add to your life through obedience. He's about to add you to the old shop. He's going to add to your life through obedience. He says, and I will add unto your life 15 years and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. That was another wicked king that had the people on lockdown. Mm. Hallelujah. He says, I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked king. Come on. He said, ah, you did your shot. So not only was God going to heal Hezekiah, not only was he going to add more years to his life. Catch this revelation real quick. He said, I'm going to deliver you out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend your city mm, for my own sake. My God tonight. He says, and for thy servant David's sake. Uh-huh. Verse seven, which is real powerful. I want you to hold it. Right here in verse 7. And Isaiah the prophet said, take a fig of lumps. I'm sorry, take a lump of figs. And 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 he took it and laid it on the boil. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he was recovered. He recovered. He was completely healed. Glory to God. This is a passage of scripture that explains in detail how God heals us. Hallelujah. Now this was Hezekiah, but many of you are like Hezekiah tonight. Mm -hmm. Many of you have situations and some of you are in a storm and some of you are in a crisis right now. Amen. And some of you have what is called an issue. Mm -hmm. And God told me to tell you that your issue is not unto death. Hallelujah. Your situation is not unto death. Hallelujah. You will not die in it. Hallelujah. But God's going to heal you in the midst of it. Glory to God. What did, what did God say to Hezekiah? He said, listen, in those days, Hezekiah's sickness was unto death. But it took the prophet to come to speak life. But even before the prophet spoke life, what did he tell him? He said, this is the instruction from God. He said, I need you to turn your face to the wall. Mm -hmm. See, anytime you're in the midst of a healing, ah, glory to God. Anytime you're in the midst of a healing, Sister Michelle, Anytime you're really desperate and you need God to do something for you, he always gives instruction. Mm -hmm. And God is saying on tonight, will you follow his instruction? Glory to God. Because see, 15 more years was added on to Hezekiah's life. Glory to God. Not only that, his family was saved. His household had shifted. Glory to God. Because now, amen, he was not going to die, but he began to live. Mm, hallelujah. He began to live. Glory to God. He began to live. Now in verse seven, which I want you to hold on to, what happened is he took the lump of figs. Hallelujah. He took what was natural. Amen. God sometimes will give us something natural. God bless you, overseer Smiley. God, ambassador, God bless you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes God will give us something in the natural. Mm-hmm. 
See, the figs, hallelujah, was what was needed to put on the boil. But, but see, it was also a representation of doing something in the natural. Mm, help me, Holy Ghost. See, sometimes you need something spiritual from God, but he will ask you to do something in the natural. Mm, hallelujah. He says, can you do what I'm asking you to do in the natural so that I can heal you in the spirit? Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. He, he took the lump of figs. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. The prophet told him, take the lump of, lump of figs. He said it, and he took it and he laid it on the boil. Uh-huh. And he recovered. Glory to God. So this was a natural healing and also a spiritual healing because the prophet was in the midst of the healing. Mm. Hallelujah. And any time, speak Holy Ghost, God sends the prophet. Hallelujah. That's because it's a 911 call. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, this was a 911 because, hallelujah, Hezekiah was about to die. Mm, hallelujah. And that's just like many of you. It's not a natural death. You ain't about to leave here. Hallelujah. Because God ain't called your number or your name yet. Glory to God. But, amen, it's a spiritual death. Hallelujah. And the enemy wants you to die spiritually. See, 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 if he can get you to die spiritually, then your ministry is null and void. Glory to God that there's no more ministry. Hallelujah. That there's no more substance in you. Hallelujah. The anointing of God cannot flow out of you because if you give up and die now, hallelujah, and this is not natural, but in the spirit, if you give up and die now, then it, it's nothing to you. Hallelujah. But really God has need of you. Glory, glory. I say God has need of you. Hallelujah. He has need of you. Amen. Kashina says years. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Receive the part of the word that is for you. Glory to God. Receive what it is that God has just for you. And so the Lord said, as he began to deal with me, amen, about what your issue is, and it's not unto death. He said, tell my people that I'm about to come to their rescue. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. He said, tell my people I'm about to come to their rescue. Glory to God. There are some of you tonight and that's why I'm here. Amen. I wasn't feeling too well in my body. I was a little tired because I had just started back at the gym. Amen. My daughter went back to school on this morning. So I had an early, early morning and I told God, I said, Lord, I'm tired. You know, I said, I'm tired. You know, he said, okay. And I said, all right, but I'm tired, you know. And I said, well, you know, I, I'll get on live and I'll get on the prayer line, you know, and um, you give me a word, God, I'm going to release it. Hallelujah. And that's when he gave me this word. He said, there's going to be many who are going to join the live who are ready to give up. And I said, yes, Lord. He said, I'm sending you to help rescue those who are in the midst of giving up. Mm -hmm. He said, not only is it going to be those in the church, but it's those outside of the church. I say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hear you. And so there are times, leaders, that God will shift your mandate. Mm. Hallelujah. Who am I talking to tonight? There are times that God will shift your mandate. It doesn't mean that you don't operate in the same gift. Hallelujah. He just begins to shift your mandate to the point to where now your gift has made room for you. Mm. Hallelujah. 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 He says, if I can get you to be faithful in the little, he says, I'll make you ruler over much. Who am I talking to tonight? Glory to God. He says, if I can get you just to do the little thing that I'm asking you to do. Hallelujah. Just that 10 minutes of prayer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just the, the 15 minutes of prayer. Can, can you pray for somebody else? Can you intercede for somebody else? He says, because many of you have things on the altar. Hallelujah. But what you need God to do for you, listen to this. He has need of you. He has need of you to do something. Glory to God. And the Bible says, mm -hmm, to whom much is given, much is required. So when God gives you that little, guess what? It's still much that is required. Glory to God. Even if you feel like your calling is small, even if you feel like your ministry is small, who am I encouraging tonight? Even if you just got started, even if you just gave a God a yes, hallelujah, at the beginning of this year, and now God is using you. Hallelujah. You gave God a yes last year and you, and you gave him a real yes. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but some of you just came back to God just in the nick of time. And because you came back in the nick of time, he's about to use you. Mm-hmm. Glory to God. He's about to use you. But God said for me to tell you tonight that your issue is not unto death. 
Hallelujah. It is not unto death. Glory to God. It is not unto death. Hallelujah. Get that in your spirit tonight. It's not unto death. Hallelujah. It is not unto death. In other words, your ministry is going to thrive even the more. Glory to God. Because see, it's in the affliction that you go through that you realize God is a deliverer. Amen. It's when we're afflicted that we realize he's a way maker. It's when we're afflicted, hallelujah, that we realize that we need God to bring us out. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Hallelujah. But the Lord delivers us out of them all. Amen. So God is in the midst of delivering you right now. Hallelujah. And if you know anything about delivery, yes, Lord, I hear you. If you know anything about delivery, glory to God. Hallelujah. It, it, it's not all, it doesn't look good. Hallelujah. It is not a pretty situation. Glory to God. Even when a baby is being delivered, hallelujah, even coming into the earth, it doesn't look good. Hallelujah. That mother is in so much pain. Hallelujah. First of all, the mother got to carry the baby for nine months. Glory to God. And then after that, the mother got to push the baby out. Hallelujah. But, but it's not a nice situation. Amen. When you got those labor pains, who am I talking to? When you got those situations in your life and you're like, I can't take no more. Hallelujah. That's just like that mother that's carrying that baby. And she's saying, wait a minute. I know one day I'm going to birth this thing out. Hallelujah. She's saying, I, I know what I'm carrying has purpose, Alicia. Glory to God. I, I know that what's inside of me got great purpose. You know, I've been carrying this baby for a long time. I've been laboring in the Lord for a long time. Hallelujah. I've been helping other people. But God, now is the time for me to birth out this baby. Hallelujah. I have to produce, hallelujah, what it is that's inside of me now. Glory. Hallelujah. And God is saying he's working in the midst of your issue. He's working in the midst of it. Hallelujah. But you got to keep on going. Glory to God. Hallelujah. See, Hezekiah was rewarded once he followed the instruction of the prophet. Hallelujah. He, he was rewarded, woman of God, Shemekah, once he realized, amen, that God saw fit to bless him, to send the prophet, hallelujah, to, to release a word of healing and to release a word of longevity over his life. See, the 15 years sounds good, but somebody need to shout longevity. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God hired the Osha. Hallelujah. When God gives you more of something, amen, that's longevity. He's giving you the ability to work it out. He's giving you the ability to stretch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's giving you the ability to keep on going. Glory to God. See, those 15 years sound beautiful, but how many of you know those were 15 years added on? to his life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But it wasn't until he turned his face. That's right. Longevity, longevity. See when God, when God gives you longevity, people of God, let me tell you something. That's endurance. Also, he gives you endurance in the midst of it. Hallelujah. He gives you strength in the midst of it. Amen. So Hezekiah, he just didn't get 15 years where he just sat on his hands now. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He got 15 more years of longevity. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. He got higher than the old shot. He got 15 more years of strength. Glory to God. He had 15 more years added to his life. Hallelujah. And I promise you those 15 years was greater than the years he had before. Because see, anytime God adds to you, glory to God, Matthew 6 and 33, one of my favorite scriptures. Glory to God. Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Anytime God adds something to us, people of God, and I know it's not many of you on Instagram live, but we're going to keep you with us. Instagram. Hallelujah. Anytime God adds to your life. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah is greater than when you first began. Amen. It is greater than when you first began. Glory to God. The Bible says the end of a thing is better than the beginning, right? Hallelujah. So there are times that when you start out, glory to God, when you're starting out, it may not be easy. When you're starting out, it's a little rough. Come on. Hallelujah. Even when you're first starting a race, you're nervous. You know, you're a little anxious. You know, you're like, how good am I going to do? Hallelujah. Am I going to do well? Am I going to win the race? Hallelujah. Anytime you start something new, 
Right, Sister Shamika, woman of God, Shamika, anytime you start something new, you start out good. You know, the Bible says you did run well, but who hindered you? Huh? Glory to God. See, starting out good and having a new beginning. We talked about it last week. New beginnings are great and everybody get excited about new beginnings. But the truth of the matter is this. Hallelujah. In your new beginning, you really don't know what it entails. <laughs> Glory to God. God will give you something new. We get excited about the new. Oh, God going to give me a new this. He giving me new that. It's a new beginning. All right. But you you have no idea what that new entails. Because see that, oh, you did the old shot. I hear you, God. That new beginning also requires a new yes to the Lord. All right. All right. Come on. Because see the old yes ain't going to help you in the new beginning. Okay. Okay, I hear you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Anytime God gives something new. So when God added those 15 years to Hezekiah's life, that was a new start for him. Come on, hallelujah. Because higher did the old shot. He was, he was getting sick towards the end of his new beginning. Did y'all catch that revelation? See, Hezekiah was getting sick almost unto death. But God added. <laughs> you caught that, Brittany? Hallelujah. You caught that woman of God? Listen, God added the 15 years, so that was a new start for Hezekiah. Mm. <laughs> Glory to God. See, we get caught up in the years, and we like, oh, you know, he added 15 more years onto his life. Well, that was Hezekiah's new beginning. Amen. It was a new start. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And even in this message, the Lord is saying, I know it seemed like it was, it was, it was unto death. I know it seemed like some things was dying in your life and some things was over. The Lord says, no, he says, no, it's just a new start, a new beginning. Hallelujah. It's a new beginning for you. He says, I'm going to deliver you out of it though. Glory to God. He says, I'm going to heal you in the midst of it. Hallelujah. See, God healed Hezekiah in the midst of his sickness. He did not leave Hezekiah where he was. Glory to God. He, he did not leave him for dead. For dead. Glory to God. Just like some people, you know, some people will leave you to the side of the road. You know, they'll say there's nothing to you. Glory to God. You got some people that'll just leave you over there and they'll say, well, she going to be all right. He going to be okay. Mm-hmm. And God says, all right, okay, you left them to the, to the side to die. That's all right. I'm going to pick them up. Hallelujah. I'm going to, that's right. I'm going to heal them right where they are. And that's what God did with Hezekiah. Hallelujah. That's exactly what he did with him. And that's exactly what God's going to do with you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So I prophesy over your future. I prophesy over your destiny. I speak new beginnings. I speak higher to the old shot that God will add more years, that he will give you longevity. Hallelujah. In the midst of what you're going through, that the sickness is not unto death. Hallelujah. But you shall live and not die. You shall declare the works of the Lord. You shall keep on going. You shall keep on praying in the things of God. I know they hurt you, Latanya, but how did the old shot? But God says, that's okay. He said, because in the midst of the pain, Latanya, in the midst of the hurt, I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that he birthed an anointing out of you. Mm. Glory to God. He, 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 he birthed an anointing out of you, Latanya. Amen. Because Sheena says, I receive it. Hallelujah. See, sometimes in the midst of people turning their back on you and really showing their true colors, because really in God, you know, he's going to allow you to see certain things. He's going to allow you to see certain people. And, and it comes with the elevation. Amen. It comes with the elevation. It comes, you know, with the fact when God is transitioning you and God is shifting you. Amen. To a greater place in him. Hallelujah. There has to be exposure. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And God is great at exposing stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. He will expose. Amen. The thing that you cannot see. Hallelujah. He will reveal the thing that you cannot see. Hallelujah. And we talked about it earlier. Discernment. And God said his people need more discernment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need more discernment. We need to be. We need to have keen eyesight, Cynthia. Daughter Cynthia, you need to have more keen eyesight. Amen. If you're not sure about something, yes, Lord, I hear you. Mm. Cynthia Ev Evan, um, the Lord says, if you're not sure about something, he wants you to ask him. Hallelujah. If you're not sure about something, if you're not sure about someone, mm -hmm, Cynthia, I hear the Lord saying, continue to ask him. Glory to God. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. It says, knock and the door shall be open unto you. 
Hallelujah. Matthew 7 and 7. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we thank God for his word on tonight. Amen. It was short and to the point. Glory to God. But I thank God for it. Amen. I thank God for your coming out. Amen. I thank God that you will not die in that situation. Hallelujah. But you shall live. Hallelujah. And you shall have what is called longevity. God's going to add more years to your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you for this word. Hallelujah. I seal this word in the blood of Jesus and I count it done. Father, I have done exactly what you asked me to do on tonight. Hallelujah. Releasing your word unto your people. Now, Father God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, that your spirit will continue to rest with each and every person. Even those on our prayer line on tonight, God. Even though it is it's almost to the midnight hour, oh God. We thank you right now, Father, that you are in the midst of us. We thank you right now, Father God. You said where two or three are gathered, you are in the midst. Lord, we thank you right now for strength being released on this live tonight. We thank you right now for strength being released on our prayer line tonight. We thank you right now, Father, that you are in the midst of us. Higher did the Osha. And God, you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father, we thank you for this word of strength on tonight. And Lord, I thank you, yes, God, hallelujah, for the edification and even for the comfort for your people in Jesus. Jesus mighty name and Lord I thank you for the manifestation of this word coming to pass each and every testimony that's going to come forth father we thank you for doing it now we praise you for doing it now and it's in Jesus mighty name we do pray amen and amen hallelujah if you agree with that prayer tonight just shout amen in your atmosphere Glory to God. Amen. We thank God on tonight. Usually we're on about another hour. Amen. We don't get off until like after 12 o'clock. Glory to God. Amen. But we thank God on tonight for what he has done. Amen. If you receive the word, just shout, I receive the word. Hallelujah. I can't see the hearts. Amen. I can't see the likes, the thumbs up and all of that um, until the uh, broadcast is over. If I watch the replay, then I'll be able to see who hit the hearts and things like that. But I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. If you receive this word tonight, just shout, I receive the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I receive the word of the Lord. One thing I love about God is that he will not leave us ignorant of Satan's devices. Amen. You have to know that you have an adversary. You have an enemy that does not like you. Amen. I have an enemy that does not like me. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So don't be um, naive to the fact that the devil does not like you. Amen. But God will give you wisdom, people of God. He will give you discernment to be able to discern who's for you and who's not for you. God will also give you discernment to let you know who's on his side and who's not on his side. Amen. We got to be real tonight. Everybody is not believers of Jesus Christ. Everybody is not a believer of the Lord. Amen. And so you have to be very careful and very cautious in this season, people of God. Amen. That doesn't mean that you don't pray for them if they're evil. That doesn't mean that you don't witness to them, you know, because everybody needs to know about Jesus. But we're in a time now where you have to use discernment. Glory to God. You really have to use discernment. You know, um, I just want to touch this real quick. Um, there's something called a reprobated mind. Amen. Um, I, I see some of you is dropping off. That's okay. Amen. They probably just came for the word. That's all right. Amen. Um, you have what is called a reprobated mind. Right. And God says he has given some over to a reprobated mind. And so when you see someone who has a reprobated mind, it is just that. Amen. It is just that, you know, their mind is reprobated. They're not thinking about God. You know, you try to witness to them. You try to tell them about the Lord. Their mind has been turned over to the enemy. So you have to be very careful. Amen. You have to be very careful and you have to use wisdom. Glory to God. We're not in the time we were in 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you know. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sharon, tonight, woman of God. God bless you. Amen. And so we're in a time now where you have to use discernment. Amen. Naturally as well as spiritually. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with asking God a question, but never question what God is doing. Amen. I'm going to say that one more time. It's okay to ask God a question, but we should never question what God is doing. I'm going to say it one more time. So you can catch it real quick. It's okay to ask God questions, right? You, you may have some questions, 
but we should never question what God is doing because he's sovereign. Amen. He knows your end from your beginning. He knows, listen, he created us. So he knows what's best for us. But a lot of times we get off track, right? A lot of times we come out of his will. We're just going to be truthful tonight, right? Even when you get saved, you're not always walking a straight and narrow path. Because the trick and the plan of the enemy is to get you distracted. Amen. But God said he would not leave us ignorant of Satan's devices. So that's when you have to seek God even the more. Amen. You got to stay in his presence even the more. And here in this ministry, I teach our members and covenant partners to worship and not worry. Hallelujah. Worship and not worry. We have to worship God and stop worrying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Worry is of the devil. Worrying is of the enemy. <laughs> Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God says, I need you to worship and not worry. Mm, hallelujah. Somebody, you need to hold that word for the rest of this week. Glory to God. Hold that word for the rest of this week. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody says on Instagram, what do you have to do to remove a strong demonic spirit? Can you email me? And we can converse that way. Amen. Because I need the details. Because if that strong demonic spirit is around you or in you or in someone else, then I got to give you specific instruction. I can't just touch it. I can't just say, you know, this is what you do when there's a strong demonic spirit around you. And this is how you remove it. It depends on what, like I said, if it's in you and another person, you know, because the Bible says that the anointing destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. And some of you are playing with demons. Uh Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. Some of you may be playing with demons. And I'm not saying this is you on Instagram, but let me just... Let me just touch it real quick. Amen. Some of you don't have the anointing that it takes to destroy the yoke in somebody else's life. So you can't play with demons. You, you, so you, you, just, you just can't play with demons. You can't play with devils. Come on. The Bible says a devil can't cast out another devil. <laughs> Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, a devil can't cast out a devil now. Y'all not talking back to me tonight. Glory to God. We got people walking hand in hand with the devil. But no, God's higher to the old child. Jesus cast out devils. He said, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Mm. Glory to God. See, leaders, we supposed to be casting devils out. We ain't supposed to be walking with the devil, walking hand in hand with the devil, siding with the devil, compromising with the devil. Somebody shout the devil is a liar. Mm. Hallelujah. If God called you out, higher to the old child, then why remain with them? Come on, if God called you out of that, then why remain with them? Come on, hallelujah. That's why I stay in your lane. Everybody ain't called to cast out devils, but you should be. If you saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, <laughs> you should be casting out some devils. Okay. <laughs> some people say, oh, that's only deliverance ministry. Okay, all right, no, you should be doing that too. Come on, instead of siding with the devil, but see, a devil can't cast out an eye of a shade. Mm. A devil can't cast out a devil now. That's the Bible. That's the word. <laughs> That's why she says not entertaining the devil. That's why we don't compromise with the enemy. We cast the devil out. Amen. But thank you for that comment. Please email me, prophetesscarmen100 at gmail.com. Amen. That is my personal email, prophetesscarmen100 at gmail.com. Amen. You can email me your questions. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Amen. But I thank God for this word on tonight. Hallelujah. Is there anyone that desires prayer? Amen. If you desire prayer, we're going to remain on our prayer line tonight. Amen. The number to dial is 712. Amen. Thank you, Brittany. God bless you tonight. Thank you, woman of God. Amen. To God be all the glory. Hallelujah. If you need prayer tonight, the number to dial is 712-775-7031. The access code is 222-953-820-POUND. Once again, 712-775-7031. The access code is 222-953-820-POUND. Amen. Brittany says, Prophetess, I pray God remove any and every obstacle in your way. Amen. Amen, woman of God. I didn't know I had some obstacles, but I received that. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Amen. To God be all the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for posting the number. Yes. Thank you, Sharon. God bless you, woman of God. Amen. On tonight. God bless all the leaders in the body of Christ on tonight. Amen. I believe there's some powerful leaders that are with us tonight. 
Amen. Some of you are pastors. Some of you are prophets. Glory to God. Some of you are evangelists. Some of you are teachers. Hallelujah. Some of you are apostles. Glory to God. I need prayer. I'm in the hospital on the oxygen low and with COVID. All right, Darshan, can you please join our prayer line? We want to pray for you. Matter of fact, I pray on this live tonight for you. Is it Darshan? Darshan, I'm going to pray for you right now. Amen. You're in the hospital. I'm going to pray for you. Glory to God. We're going to believe God for total healing. Just to testify, I had COVID-19 twice. Amen. I did. I had it twice. Uh-huh. And I beat it. The Lord healed my body both times. Glory to God. One time was negligence. Amen. I just didn't know. Amen. I had went to a, um, a couple stores there in Philadelphia to get some oatmeal. And <laughs> not knowing that those stores were contaminated with COVID-19. Um, and so, yeah, you, if anybody knows in Philadelphia, those YY stores um, here in the South, nobody knows about YY. You say YY, they say, what is that? Um, but YY um, had contracted um, COVID-19 rapidly within like three days. And this was um, in 2020, March of 2020. Um, and so a lot of people, if you had went to that YY, either the one on Rising Sun or Copman Avenue, Whichever one in Philadelphia, those were the two that really had it bad. They had it very bad. And um, I actually went to both of those stores that day to get some oatmeal. That's all I wanted. <laughs> but some oatmeal and, you know, touching everything and all of that and everything. So I contracted COVID-19. Amen. Yes. Yes, Sharon. Yes. Yes, woman of God. Mm -hmm. It was on the news and everything. Yeah. And so when I got here to North Carolina, early part of um, this year, Amen. One of my members uh, was rushed, being rushed to the hospital. Um, she had no ride and I had to take her there. Amen. So I rushed her to the hospital. Um, both her lungs was filled up with fluid. She had double pneumonia. Um, when I got to her apartment, um, her fever had to be 105, 104, 105. Amen. And so um, as, as transporting her to the emergency, um, after I got the phone call, it's either that or she probably would have uh, had passed away in her apartment. Um, but I thank God for it. Amen. I was obedient and I took her to the emergency and in the midst of it, praying for her, laying hands on her in the vehicle and driving at the same time. Her fever did break. Uh, we thank God for that. Her fever broke, but amen. The, the symptoms were still there. Amen. And they had admitted her for a few days. So, you know, I thank God. Amen. Because, um, I did have some symptoms of COVID. Amen. But God healed me again. So COVID-19 is real. I like to tell people that because some people don't believe it. They say, well, I never contracted it, so I don't believe it. Well, yeah, it is real. Amen. It, it is real. Um, and yes, many have died from it. Amen. So if you had COVID-19, God bless you, Pastor Stephanie. God bless you tonight. <laughs> I thank God for you, woman of God. Amen. Glory to God. Um, so be very cautious. Be very careful, people of God. But I'm going to pray for you, Darshan. Is it Dash? Am I saying your name correctly? Amen. Oh, he's amazing. Truly amazing woman of God, Sharon. Yes, I thank God for it. Amen. Um, but COVID is real. Amen. So be very careful, people of God. Amen. You can catch it pumping gas. I'm just, can I be real tonight? I, I love to be real. I don't like that fakeness and all of that stuff. And, you know, people say, oh, I'm covered by the blood. Yeah, you covered by the blood. But this is a heavy stream of a sickness that if it gets. I'm just going to leave it right there. It's the truth anyhow. It's a lot of people that died in Christ. Listen, what was it? 12 bishops died in Philadelphia, 12 or 8 from COVID, from COVID, um, from COVID-19, from Church of God in Christ. I mean, you can look it up. You can look it up. I believe it was eight bishops in one month. Amen. So be very careful, people of God. Amen. They said another stream is coming. I don't believe that. We pray against it, of course. Amen. But we use wisdom. Amen. So God bless you all tonight. Let's pray for Sister Darshan. Darshan, are you still there? Glory to God. I want you to put your right hand over your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh gosh, I had to go test a positive COVID. Patient. Yeah, be very careful. Yeah, my daughter, um, my oldest daughter just um, contracted it and she works in the nursing field. And she says she believes she got it when she gave a young lady some water in the lobby. And she said her mask was down a little bit. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, Pastor Stephanie, yes, yes, we will pray for you in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, yes. Let's pray, people of God. Hallelujah. We're going to believe God for healing. We're going to believe God to touch those who need. Ah, you did the old shot. We're going to believe God to touch those who he need healing tonight. Darshan, I see you still there. So, Darshan, I want you to put your right hand over your heart. Hallelujah. God's going to open up your lungs also. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now for what you have done in the midst of us. So, God, we thank you for your word that has already gone forth, Father. Now, Father, right now, I decree and declare healing over your people in the name of Jesus. Father, we take this time to repent of our sins, oh God. Any sins that we have committed, Father, we ask right now for your forgiveness, Lord, we ask that you wash our, our slate clean, Father, in the name of Jesus right now, oh God, and that your healing power would move through this live, oh God, move through Instagram live, move through our prayer line tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Those right now, oh God, who need their hearts to be touched right now, God, we ask that you would touch hearts tonight, oh God, remove any sickness in the name of Jesus right now, God, oh God, creating us a clean heart, Father, and renew within us a right spirit, Lord, those who need physical healing even now, God who may have received bad reports from the doctor. Father, we thank you right now, God, that they're trusting in you. Oh, God, they're leaning and depending on you, Father, for complete healing. So, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, I speak complete healing over your people right now. Father, touch Darshan from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, oh, God. Oh, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, every symptom that she had before we begin to pray, God, we thank you right now that it's dying higher than the ocean. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, every, every Mm, yes, God, I hear you. Mm, hallelujah, hallelujah. Every unclean spirit. Mm. In the name of Jesus right now, every sickness that's trying to attach itself to Darshan's body right now. We cancel the assignment of the enemy. And I speak complete healing in the name of Jesus. Right now, from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, Father, we thank you for the touch right now. Oh, God, you are Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that healeth thee. And, Father, as she believes by faith, oh, God, that you are touching her right now, Father. We thank you for your touch, God. Mm. We thank you, Lord God, she will be discharged from the hospital. Ha, glory. Hallelujah. Father, there shall be no complications in the name of Jesus. Um, oh God, ha, huh? yes, Lord. Open up her lungs right now, God. Mm. Father, we thank you for baffling the doctors and the nurses even now. Oh, God, we thank you right now, God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. For a way of escape, there's going to be an exit, Darshan. Hallelujah. There's going to be an exit, the Lord says, in the hospital, but also in your life. Hallelujah. God is getting ready to make a way for you. He's going to make an exit for you, Darshan. He's going to make an exit for you mm, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for your healing power now. Oh, God, right now, touch Pastor Stephanie, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, God, you've touched your daughter many times before, God. Oh, God, she has faced death doors many times, oh, God. And we thank you, yes, God, hallelujah, for saving her many times and healing her many times. But, Father, she's calling on you once again. So, Father, I touch and agree with every prayer that Pastor Stephanie has prayed unto you, Father, right now. And I touch and agree in the name of Jesus, um, oh, God, that you would heal her body once again, oh, God. Strengthen her heart right now, Father, I pray in the name name of Jesus and Lord any distraction any hindering spirit that is trying to attach itself to her. Father, we thank you right now. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. We thank you right now, God. Oh, God, that yes, Lord, I hear you. Mm, that it will go far away from her, never to return in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we thank you right now for a clear path also for Pastor Stephanie. Mm, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it now. We praise you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, even as I was praying, I got to release this. Amen. I really want to exit. Amen. And just stay on our prayer line. But I have to release this. The Lord says, those of you, amen, that are even in a place of sickness right now. He's, God says he's getting your attention. Hallelujah. He's getting your attention. He's getting your attention. Mm-hmm. He's getting your attention. Mm -hmm. It's not that you did anything wrong, but God has need of you. Hallelujah. Pastor Stephanie Wills, God still has need of you. Hallelujah. You will still pray for the sick. Hallelujah. Even in your situation, the Lord says you shall continue to encourage Pastor Stephanie, those who need encouragement. God says he still has need of you. Sister Darshan, I love you too. God bless you. Darshan, the Lord says he's making a way of escape for you. He's going to let you leave out of the hospital. 
And when you leave out of the hospital, CC, I got your inbox. When you leave out of the hospital, your life is going to change. Hallelujah. Those that were in your life, Darshan, that meant you no good, they, they, um, they were not for you. They're not for you, Darshan. The Lord is going to reveal them to you. And you have to start making better decisions. Hallelujah. You have to start making better decisions, Darshan. And don't be naive. In other words, you have to learn how to tell people no. I know it's kind of hard because you're a giver and you want to help everybody. You know, most of us that are givers, we, we you know, it's kind of hard to tell people no. But in this season, Darshan, you have to tell some people no. Listen, if they get upset with you, it's fine because they were upset from the very beginning. So God's going to reveal to you their true colors. God's going to reveal to you how they really feel about you. And if they tell you off, just take the words. Don't give them choice words, but just take it. All right. And just say, okay, God already warned me. The Lord prepared me for it. All is well. Hallelujah. All is well. That's what you say, Sister Darshan. Amen. And keep it moving. And God's going to continue to cover you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody give God some praise. Amen. Sister Michelle says confirmation. Glory to God. We thank God on tonight. Hallelujah for his word. Amen. I'm trying to exit y'all. Amen. But I feel somebody pulling. I feel like there's somebody that, amen, needs a prayer or needs to hear a word from the Lord. You know, God dealt with me before I got on the live. Amen. He said, there's somebody that's going to be on the live who's ready to give up their life. And I said, okay, guys, that's suicide. You know, he said, they're ready to give up their life. And I said, okay, Lord. He said, and this word is going to pull them up out of that dark place. And so if that's you on tonight, hallelujah, give God praise. Amen. If that's you on tonight, give God glory. Hallelujah. Listen, we are in critical times, people of God. The times we're in right now, it, it, it's, it's dangerous. It's dangerous times. I got a, I got a message um, from a young lady there in Philadelphia. A police officer was shot. I'm not sure if the police officer made it. Amen. But I prayed immediately uh, for that police officer there in Philadelphia. It's a lot going on. Hallelujah. But God is still faithful. I said, it's a lot going on, people of God, but God is still faithful. I'm going to say it one more time in the Holy Ghost. It's a lot going on, but God is still faithful. Hallelujah. Those of you, yes, Lord, I hear you. Those of you that are intercessors have to stay on the wall. You have to stay on the wall. Hallelujah. You have to stay in a place of intercession. Stop worrying about what you don't have. Listen, God takes care of his prophet and he takes care of his intercessor. Amen. Come on. He, he takes care of his own. He takes care of his vessels. Amen. So when you pray and intercede for somebody else, people of God, God in turn will do the same for you. Amen. You know what I'm talking about, Evangelist Arlene. Amen. Because intercession is in you. Glory to God. So as you continue to pour out of yourself, somebody shout, that's ministry. Somebody shout, that's ministry. You don't need a title to do that. Amen. Because before you get called to ministry, you've been doing it anyway. Come on here. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. And that don't mean go out there and do whatever you want to do now. Because them, them demons going to, you know, chew you up and spit you out. Them witches and warlocks, they waiting for you. Amen. You know, those of you that say, oh, I, I'm called to ministry. God called me. Okay, you go ahead on out there without a covering. You go right on ahead. Amen. Come on. Amen. We do everything in decency and in order so that God can keep us covered. Amen. Glory to God. That's right. Intercessors stay on the wall. Amen. That's right, sister, um, woman of God, um, Pastor Stephanie. Amen. Yes. Continue to give God your all. Continue to give God your all. Continue to give God your all, people of God. Listen, we in the last and evil days. Amen. Give God all of you. Amen. Give God all of you. Hallelujah. Those of you that are called by God, stop making excuses and just give God your all. <laughs> Amen. Stop making excuses and give God your all. Stop saying what you don't have and just thank God for what you do have. <laughs> Amen. That's right. That's ministry. That's real ministry. And then when you do things unselfishly. Amen. Because ministry is never about you anyway. It's not about me. Amen. I got to get up in the morning. 
Hallelujah. That's why right. rip, rip raggedy. Amen. You are so right, woman of God. I'm telling you, people don't understand. And they'll go out there, oh, I'm anointed. I'm anointed like my pastor. I'm anointed like this person. Okay, well, you go right on ahead. When you, okay, when you come back, we'll, we'll be right here waiting. We'll, we'll be waiting with the oil to pray you back, to pray you back again. <laughs> it's the truth anyhow. Amen. And some of us had to learn the hard way. Come on. That's why we're able to tell you something. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anytime you hear somebody speaking from a place of wisdom, it's because they've been there already. Come on. If you hear a person speaking from a place of wisdom, it's because they've been there already. Amen. Come on. We done fell in that hole many times. <laughs> and God had to pull us up out of it <laughs> and say, wait a minute, you're still not ready. Come on here. Glory to God. I thank God for my leaders. Amen. I thank God for my former pastors. You know, I, I thank God. It was like, Carmen, you are not ready. I said, okay, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Because I didn't feel like I was ready anyway. Come on. For those of you that feel like you're ready, ready for what? Do you know what all ministry entails? Do you know it's sleepless nights? Come on, for those of y'all that think it's just speaking in tongues and haka mashanda and <laughs> for those of you that think ministry just looks so glamorous and it looks so beautiful. No, it's sleepless nights. God going to speak to you. He going to deal with you before you minister to his people. Come on. So the more that the prophet has a word for you, guess what? That prophet is going through H-E double hockey sticks. Come on. That's why he said, honor his prophets. Because you have no idea what the prophet goes through. All right. Come on. You, you have no idea. The prophetic dreams. Come on. Can we touch that? For those of you that want to dream prophetically. Well, have you ever seen the end times? Okay. Maybe that's too deep. Because God gave me. He, listen. He gave me the dreams of the end times when he saved me. My first year being saved, he showed me the end times. I said, what is this? Planes in the air crashing. Y'all not talking back to me. Hallelujah. Blood running down the street. Y'all not talking back to me. Hallelujah. Women running with the children naked. Y'all not talking back to me. Hallelujah. That's the end time. Did you ever have a dream about that yet? Did you have a vision about that yet? Did God show you men in the street fighting each other? Did, did he show you people robbing and stealing? Did, did, did he give you a glimpse of that? Somebody shout the end times. Stuff that just make you not even want to see no more. Natural and spiritual. <laughs> Come on here. But everybody want to be a seer. I'm a seer. What do you see then? I'm a prophet. What, 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 when the last time you prophesied? Prophesying what? A house? I could tell you you about to get a house. I could tell you you about to get a car. Anybody can say that. But a true prophet, higher did the old shot, will tell you about your sin. And call that sin out. And take you through deliverance. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said a true prophet. See, they, they don't want that part. No, they just want to be the glamorous prophet. The prophet, you know, that, that preaches prosperity. That everybody to be blessed. Well, the truth of the matter is you're not going to be blessed anyway if you're not faithful over the little. Somebody shout, Lord, help me to be faithful over the little. Come on. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, Lord, help me to be faithful over the little. Mm -hmm. Because when you're faithful over the little, he'll make you ruler over much. Come on. Hallelujah. And God is looking for those who he can trust. I remember about three years ago, I'm going to give y'all this last key point and I'm, we're going to exit. I believe it was about three years ago. We were crossing over. Amen. You would want to be truly blind. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of stuff that God shows you um, when you're his prophet, you're his vessel. Um, and it's not all good. All is good. I don't, you know. So many people just see so many good and wonderful things. I'm like, okay, he's not showing you anything else. He, he's not showing you the sins that's taken over the world. He's not showing you the disobedience in the children and, and how the word says that, that, that children will come against their parents. So, so prophecy is the word of God fulfilling itself. 
and the word of God is fulfilling itself right now. There shall be rumors of wars. There shall be there shall be famines in lands that there was never famine. There shall be pestilence. All of that is in the Bible. Come on, all of this stuff is in in the Word of God. So the Word of God is fulfilling itself, and Jesus is the Spirit of prophecy. So that's prophecy. This this whole book right here, sixty six books. This is prophecy. So when somebody come up and tell you you're gonna be a millionaire, that doesn't mean that that's a prophetic word from the Lord. And guess what? It may not come to pass because if you're not faithful over the little, you're not going to make millionaire status. It's just not going to happen. Amen. <laughs> I'm just being real. Amen. I'm just being real and being transparent. Amen. Because so many people get caught up on prophecy and when they really need the word of God, because the word is what's going to keep us. Amen. God says to covet prophecy, which means to love prophecy. Amen. Which means we don't reject prophecy, but we don't take prophecy over the word. Amen. Because the word is Jesus Christ himself. Amen. But a prophet, somebody that's speaking to you, help me, Holy Ghost. I don't know why we going here. A prophet can speak a word to you. Amen. But if your life is not in alignment with God, it's going to take forever to come to pass. It's not until you will obey the Lord that that word will begin to manifest. Prophecy is predicated upon your obedience to the Lord. So if you're disobedient, then you're just going to wait a long time for the word to come to pass. Yeah. And a lot of times when you receive a prophecy from a true prophet, it's a word that's going to not just edify you, but it's a word that's going to bless you and not, not just financially, but it's going to bless you spiritually to the point to where your life is going to begin to shift. And a lot of times when prophecy comes, God shifts your life. In other words, people that were in your life because of a prophetic word, now they got to leave your life in order for your, y'all not talking back to me in order for, Come on, that's why we prophesy in part and we know in part. We don't know everything. Amen. If a prophet tells you they know everything, they are lying. Come on, hallelujah. God even gives us prophetic dreams in parts. He doesn't give you the whole entire thing. Because if he gives us the whole thing, it would, it would really blow our mind. I don't think we would be able to consume it all. Amen. I remember when I first got saved. Let me just share with you all real quick because it just flashed before me. I remember when I first got saved, amen, um, and God began to give me dreams. Like I told you all, he showed me the end times, you know, um, the destruction that's going to take place. Um, he showed me that my first year of being saved. Um, but he also showed me dreams of myself traveling and preaching the word of God. Now, I had not taken a ministerial class. Um, I didn't even take my evangelism course yet. Um yeah, and God showed me myself preaching in stadiums, preaching before a lot of people. You know, he even showed me there was one dream God gave me, and I'm going to share it with you all real quick. Um, I come against any dream snatchers, any demonic spirits, all witches and warlocks. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You have no power on this broadcast. In the name of Jesus, you would not take this dream to a soothsayer. For the blood of Jesus is against you. And Satan, the Lord, rebuke you in Jesus' name. I remember when, mm -hmm, yeah, you because, you know, you got them, them spires. You have spies. You got them eye-watching spirits. You know, people that want to take what you say and take it back to a witch doctor. Can I tell you all about the witch doctor? The witch doctor has no power. And I'm going to tell you why a witch doctor has no power. I'm going to tell you why witches and warlocks don't have no power. Because the person got to keep going back to the witch. Because what they tried to put on you didn't work. So all of you that believe in witchcraft, I'm not saying that it ain't real. But it's powerless. That's why people got to keep going back to the witch doctor. They got to keep going back and saying curses and all that stuff over you and they need another piece of hair and they need another picture and they need another this and they need another that. Foolishness. So that means, <laughs> and you still here? But you still here though, Sister Lisa, and they got to keep on trying to put word curses on you. 
All right, let me give y'all the dream real quick, and we're going to exit. I remember, and I know it's going to bless somebody. I know this dream going to bless somebody. Um, I was in a, I was with a group of people. Uh, a lot of these people that were in the group, I didn't know. Two of the people I did know, but the other people I didn't know. And uh, we were traveling, and we were traveling by boat. Oh, yeah, powerless, powerless. It, it, some of y'all believe in that. Oh, it's witchcraft in my family. Okay, well, you be the one that break it by stop doing it. Stop feeding into it. Hiya, by shake. Start pleading the blood of Jesus against it. Stop saying, oh, it's witches in my family. My grandmother was a witch. My great grandmother, my great uncle, my great. All these people. Okay, well, you giving it power. It stops with you because you saved. Supposed to be, right? Come on. I hear so many people talking about witchcraft. I said, what is going on? Well, are you really a believer of God? Amen. It has no power because they got to keep going back. They got to keep on doing all kinds of stuff to keep you boxed in. And it's and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Somebody shout witchcraft. Somebody shout witchcraft does not work. Stop believing that. Stop believing it. Let me give you all the dream. Um, yeah, because you give it power when you believe it. I don't I don't believe in it. Mm-mm. No, 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 uh-uh. The Bible says no weapon that is formed against you will be able to prosper. It may form, but it won't work. <laughs> Come on, Sister Joanna, you still with us? Amen. They might put down chicken bones and all of that foolishness and try to... Mm -mm. It does not work. Because if they got to keep, think about it. Think about it. <laughs> she said witchcraft doesn't work. They roll, they just take your money. Yeah. Why not sow that seed? Why not make that a seed into the kingdom of God? Some of y'all go, okay, I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone, Sister Johanna. You just said something. I'm going to leave that alone, though. We're we going we gonna to digress on that. Because somebody's going to get offended. <laughs> somebody going to get upset. <laughs> Hallelujah. Instead of paying that palm reader and all that stuff, that stuff y'all be doing. Because you can't come to the prophet and go to the psychic. It's either one or the other. It's either you're going to believe God or you're going to trust the devil. All right. Amen. So the dream, um, we were traveling by boat. It's the truth, daughter Cynthia. It's the truth anyhow, right? So we were traveling by boat. Um, it was a group of us, and um, we got to the we got to the land. Amen. That's why Sister Lisa, they need to sow a seed into the kingdom of God, so that it can really break. Cause that's that's how you break cycles. That's how you break generational curses. Thank you, Sister Lisa, for posting that. That's how you break whatever is on your bloodline. You sow a seed into the kingdom. Stop giving your money to the soothsayer. Stop consulting. All these other psychics and what you call them people, them um not your know, voodoo workers and all okay, we're gonna leave that stuff alone. Yeah, stop y'all y'all got it, right? You got the point? Okay, sow your seed into the kingdom of God and watch God break it and destroy it off your bloodline in Jesus' name. That's for somebody tonight. That's why we're talking about it. So the dream, so we got we were in a boat and we were traveling um to this island, and when we got to the island um there was some demonic spirits that were on the on the sand and i could see them in the spirit but they were not physical people they were just like standing there waiting for us to get there and god showed me in the spirit they were demonic spirits that were waiting for us to get there and so when we got there um there were people that needed healing they needed deliverance woman of god um fill us they needed deliverance. They needed healing. And so when we got off the boat, I stepped off the boat, got on the sand. The people started coming in thousands. They just started coming in thousands and they needed to be healed. And the Lord said, lay your hands on them. Evangelist Arlene, I hadn't laid my hand on nobody yet. God gave me this dream over 15 years ago, over 18 years ago, over 20 years ago when I first got saved. And he said, lay your hands on the people. He said, and cast the spirit out of them. And that's exactly what I did. And as the people began to come, but what I saw, let me tell you all what I saw in the spirit. Some of you probably can relate to this. What I saw in the spirit was the person that was standing in front of me when I laid my hands on them, 
I know this is deep for some of y'all, but it's the truth. As they fell out in the spirit, that demon was standing there looking at me. And so as it was standing there looking at me, I just looked back at it. And it was frustrated. It was angry. It was upset that it had gotten cast out. And what I saw, I saw that spirit go and walk into the water. And it had to leave that person's body never to return. And so God gave me that dream. That was a powerful prophetic dream I had over 20 years ago. And I kept having them every two years, every three years. God kept reminding me and showing me. He said, I'm going to cause you. He said, I'm going to raise you up. And I'm going to have you to bring healing and deliverance to my land, to my people. And so I thank God for it. So anytime God has called you to something, he's going to show you what it is that he's going to have you to do. He's never going to leave you out there in the limbo, you know. So for those of you that are called by God, most likely he's already shown you. He's already given you an indication of what you're going to be doing. Some of you are teachers. You're born teachers, but you need to start teaching. Amen. And then God's going to have you to teach his word. Some of you are evangelists, which means you're going to carry the word of God. Amen. You're going to minister the word of God everywhere you go. So you have to start doing that now. Mm hmm. Some of you are called to pastor God's people, but in order to pastor, you have to have a pastor. Amen. You have to learn to sit and have a shepherd. Amen. You have to learn. I'm telling you all what I know through the spirit of God. Amen. You have to be teachable. Amen. In order to teach God's people. Amen. God has to be able to trust you. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> All right. We thank God on tonight. Amen. For his word and the moving of his spirit. We're going to exit tonight. Those of you that want to sow, I see some new faces, some new names on tonight. Amen. This ministry is very good soil. Amen. If you've never sown a seed into this, um, into this powerful ministry, amen, then you have uh, the opportunity tonight to sow, amen. Pastor Stephanie, get a seed in the ground for your healing tonight, amen. Believe God for the turnaround. Hallelujah. Those of you that are seed sowers, amen. This is the opportunity for you to sow. Amen. We have a ministry cash app. Everybody has cash app. Amen. But our ministry cash app is PIPW Ministry. All right. PIPW Ministry. And that stands for Prophetic Impact Prayer and Word Ministry. Once again, our cash app is dollar sign. Mm hmm. P-I-P-W ministry. Amen. I want to know what my gifts are. That's a good question, Sister Melissa. Amen. If you can inbox me, I will kindly, you know, um, get back to you as soon as I can, woman of God. Amen. But get connected with the ministry, Melissa, and stay connected with the ministry. God will reveal that to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying, get connected and stay connected. He will reveal that to you in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, sometimes people of God, what you need is right in front of you. Amen. So, sometimes what you need is right in front of you. Amen. Sometimes you could be searching and looking for something and it's right in front of you. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Yes. Amen. She says, I was so for Deshaun's healing. Amen. We believe God for complete healing. Yes. In Jesus name. Amen. Those of you that are members and covenant partners, if you are... Um, Amen. Are behind in your giving. Amen. Make sure that you keep your vow with God. Amen. Keep your vow with the Lord. It has nothing to do with me. Amen. But it has all to do with God. Amen. Once again, any members of covenant partners, make sure you keep your vow with the Lord. Amen. Don't continue to um, partake. Amen. Of the ministry and you're not keeping your vow. Glory to God because God's going to hold you accountable for that. Amen. And you have to answer to him. Glory to God. So please, people of God, amen, continue to remain faithful to the Lord, amen, in your prayer life, in your worship time, and in your giving, and watch God turn your situation around, amen, just like he did Hezekiah, amen, he sent the prophet, hallelujah, to uh, release the word of the Lord over his life, and Hezekiah did exactly what God told him to do, amen, and God added 15 more years to his life, my God, my God, he added longevity, Amen. I want you all to remember that tonight. Amen. So if you're believing God to add more to your life, if you're believing God to add to your life, hallelujah, some things, amen, um, may look like um, they were dying in your life. Amen. God said it's not unto death. Amen. For you shall live and not die. 
hallelujah, and declare the works of the Lord. To God be the glory. Amen. We have PayPal. The PayPal is paypal.me slash prophetic impact. Amen. I'm going to ask those of you who can tonight, if you'd be so kind to sow a $40 seed into our ministry. Amen. That will help us financially. Amen. With what we have to take care of this month going into next month. Amen. Financially. Glory to God. Those of you who can. Amen. A $40 seed into our ministry. Once again, PayPal. Um, dot me slash prophetic impact. All right. All seeds go to our ministry. They do not come to me. I do have a personal cash app if you want to bless me. Amen. But I'm not here for that. <laughs> Glory to God. Unless the Lord puts it on your heart. Amen. But I work for the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So sow your seed into the ministry. Um, our ministry cash app is PIPW ministry. Amen. And also paypal.me slash prophetic impact. We also have a website, www.propheticimpact1000.com. We have products, amen. This is our blessed anointed oil. This is a large bottle, and this is a small bottle, amen. A blessed anointed oil. Get your oil, amen. I just uh, sent out some bottles of oil today, amen. We also have a bundle package, amen. Let me show you all our beautiful prayer journal, amen. It comes with a beautiful pen. This is our fresh fire journal. Here, amen, and it says, Fresh Fire Revival, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. Prophetic Impact Prayer and Word Ministry with a beautiful, beautiful fire flame on it. Amen. Get your prayer journals. that We have a pen to match. Glory to God. And we also have, amen, this prayer journal here. Amen, which says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Chronicles 3 and 17. Amen. So you can order this prayer journal. They're $12. Or you can order this one, The Fresh Fire. Whichever one you order, please inbox me and let me know which prayer journal you want. If you don't specify, I'll just send you whichever one the Lord lays on my heart. Amen. We also have a bundle package, which consists of a small bottle of blessed anointed oil, a prayer journal, and a ministry pen. I do have to send out two bundle packages tomorrow. Amen. So I will be going to the post office. If you desire to place your order, you can place your order tonight. Amen. And be a blessing to our ministry. Amen. To God be the glory. We thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. We're going to conclude on our prayer line. The number to dial 712-775-7031. Once again, the seed amount tonight is $40 for those of you who can. Amen. Glory to God. But pray and ask the Lord the seed amount to sow tonight. Amen. And name your seed what you're believing God to do for you. All right. Name your seed what you're believing God to do for you. Amen. I believe many of you need healing tonight. Amen. Emotional healing, physical healing, spiritual healing. Amen. So name your seed healing tonight. Amen. And watch God perform a miracle. God bless you all. We love you. Amen. Pastor Prophetess Carmen Haywood signing off in Jesus name. God bless you and shalom.